I want to ask you a question this morning. What comes to your mind when you hear the word passion? Or passion. <laughs> we want to talk about passion. Actually, I would like you to think with me this morning. What comes to your mind? Maybe you can make a list of what kind of things come to your mind. Uh, some people think about Hollywood and romance. Hello, ladies. <laughs> some people think about sports and cars. Everybody's passionate about something. It's interesting, the word passion in the English language has come to describe something that we have an intense emotion about, something that we enjoy, that we're excited about, or it could be something that we feel strongly about. You're passionate, you have an intense desire or hunger to do it. I'm passionate about lots of things. Uh, when I was in high school, I was passionate about football and basketball and sports. In fact, uh, I, when I went out for basketball, I decided that I was going to become the best basketball player that our high school had ever had. The word passion, my daughter actually helped me find this out. She looked up the word and found out that it comes from a Latin word, passir, which means to suffer for. So contrary to how we normally use it in the English language to speak of emotion or intense desire, the word passion literally in its original meaning means that which you will make a sacrifice or suffer for. So we speak traditionally of the passion play. Because Jesus died. He believed so much that he died. For God so loved the world that he sent his only son. So the father believed in us and the son believed in what the father had asked him to do to the point that Jesus was willing to give his life for it. What do you believe in that you're willing to suffer for? Everybody is passionate about something. Everybody's got a passion. Now, passion affects people at the dip depths of their life because passion, like I said, is more than an emotion. It is something at the very depth of our being that motivates us and guides us. In fact, if you could draw three circles inside of each other, and the outside circle you put behavior, and then on the next circle you put beliefs, and then in the innermost circle you put the word passion, that kind of gives a picture of what I'm talking about, because passion is deeper and more influential in our lives than our beliefs. In fact, Passion helps us define what our beliefs are. I should say passions because I'm not speaking of passion as an adjective to describe, ver uh, describe a f uh, intense feeling, but I'm using it as a noun to describe something that we believe in. A set of passions is a set of core values. And your core values define who you are as a person, determines what you believe in more than your beliefs, actually. Because, and I say that because, and it's, it shouldn't always be that way, because you can have a belief in your head that doesn't go to your heart. And you can have a set of beliefs in your heart that are deeper than the beliefs in your head. I believe if everybody really believed in hell, we'd live like it. And if we really believed in heaven, it would affect our attachments to things on earth. So a set of passions at the very core of our being determines everything about us. In fact, I've made a list of how passions affect us. Uh, passions, your passions, will determine the decisions you make and how you make them. Your passions will determine what risk you're willing to take in life. Your passions will affect the goals that you set for your life. Your decisions, your risk, the goals, passions, your passions will determine how you respond to rejection or conflict or when you're under pressure. The passions you have in your life Influence how you solve problems. 
Some people run away from problems. Some people love conflict. <laughs> Your passions define how you do that. Your passions will affect the priorities you set in your life. It will determine what's most important of everything you do. So we have to ask the question, where do these passions come from that undermine us in our real beliefs, or in our beliefs? How does this dichotomy develop? And that's one of the things we're going to do in the next session, is we're going to actually look at how that that grows, or actually two sessions from now, we'll get into that. But I want to raise that issue for you and look and say there can be a difference. You can do one thing with your head, think one thing with your head, then you can do something with your behavior, but underneath it all are the Soto's values, uh, our passions. Your passions not only define what your doctrine really is to you, because I, here's what happens, see, people uh, they define their doctrine by what they want it to mean. And then they live out their behavior accordingly. So if I don't want hell to be a real hell, then I will soft-pedal it. And then I will live my life accordingly. My challenge to you is that you take time to ask yourself, what are my passions? What are my real values in life? What's more important to me than anything else? In fact, one of the things we want to do while we're working through this in these 10 sessions together is to become deeply aware of what our values or our passions really are, what they should be, and how do we go through a values or passions conversion? <laughs> 